page here's a review of our first lesson from uh, Sunday, June the 8th. And uh, we talked about a number of things that we'll, we'll kind of cover and the direction we'll go in over the course of the next few sessions. But um, in that first lesson, we kind of came away with uh, noticing something that we wanted to correct, and that had to do with our takeaway. Um, kind of what we do with the hands to kind of roll the club face open. Maybe our grip lends to that a little bit. Um, so we, we uh, wanted to work on that. And first of all, just taking a look at the face-on view. I like to always look at a lot of the positive things in somebody's golf swing. And so from a setup standpoint, um, you know, feet are comfortably shoulder width apart um, underneath you to support you when you swing the golf club. Um, ball position for an iron right here back in the middle of the stance there. And uh, as we look from a face-on view, uh, we see that in our upper body, if we say that our, our kind of where our collarbones come together is the upper swing center, we might be a little bit ahead of the golf ball there. But we also notice from the down the line view that we tend to set up with our shoulders a little open and kind of pointing out here a little more towards left field. So um, if we square the shoulders up and we were to kind of turn the shoulders and hips without moving the feet, and have them square up a little bit more towards the camera um, then you know the the upper swing center would be right over the golf ball which is where we would want to have it and so um, as we swing to the top um, we know that we uh, kind of bring the club head low into the inside and kind of roll it open to where the the face of the club might be pointing a little bit to the sky here you can see where the the club is kind of pointing more back towards the wall of the house there and the face is opening here um, and that's what we were going to look to correct and we'll see it better uh, when we look from down the line but there we are going to the top of the backswing and as you pointed out we, we kind of stand up a little bit out of our posture and we saw that in working on that takeaway and the hands in club head outside that helped that a little bit and then we kind of swing through the golf shot we hit the golf ball pretty good or in balance and we swing through to a finish and we'll definitely be able to play golf from there um, without any problem it's just a kind of a function of understanding a little bit better of what the golf club is actually supposed to do with the golf ball um, and how we use our our body motion to put the club in a proper position to to be able to interact with the ball the right way so looking at the swing from down the line, again, we'll take a look at the positives and just really in a good, solid, athletic uh, setup position here. Um, generally, we'll take a line from the back of the right bicep, or tricep rather, back of the right tricep, and we'll draw a line straight down to the top of the foot. And generally, we want that, that's kind of our center of balance, if you will. And we want that to be right over the tops of the feet, and that's where yours, your kind of balance point is. Um, Likewise with the knee, you know, the knee is flexed and it's kind of right over the middle of the foot there. And so we say, uh, obviously, the, the, the balance and the weight shifting within the golf swing um, kind of moves throughout the feet. But uh, as a general rule, right under the arches is where the true balance point and, uh, of the golf swing is. And so, um, again, from our tennis, you know, you know how to get into a ready position to return a serve or to, you know, return somebody's, you know, Monica Sellis' power forehand or something like that. Uh, so, you know, good athletic flex in the in the legs and the knees there, but nothing exaggerated and, and not just straight-legged either. So really good athletic flexion there. And then um, our inclination towards the ball is perfect, very natural. You look like you're very comfortable and uh, able to swing the golf club from there. So very good setup. And then distance from the ball, you know, you kind of pointed that out. Again, same thing. If the arms are kind of hanging down naturally uh, from the shoulder sockets and that line that we draw from the back of the right bicep is down over the top of the foot and the club head is behind the ball, then we're in pretty good shape to hit a, hit a good golf shot as far as distance from the ball there. So we'll put the club in motion. I'm going to draw a line. We talked about the line of the shaft plane. Your club had already started uh, kind of going back when that video registered, but uh, we drew a line from the bottom of the back of the ball, kind of right up through your hands there, and it goes right up through the belt line. And so you're in good 
shape there, um, kind of created the uh, framework around which to swing the club. So um, what did we notice, though? When we take the club back away from the golf ball, you know, the, the club head at this point is well behind that line. But we'll take that away for now. And we noticed that kind of right here, you know, the, the right palm is kind of facing up. The back of the left hand is kind of facing upwards. And so as a result, it's kind of hard to see, but I'll draw a line right here on the face of the club with the red line there. The face of the club is also pointing kind of upwards towards the sky there. So essentially what we've done there is kind of manipulated the club with our hands and arms, and we've opened the face in relation to the path. And so as you can imagine, we don't want it to be open when it hits the golf ball, so we're going to have to kind of work out a compensation to get that corrected as the club comes down to the ball. And what we'd rather be able to do is just have a club face that's square to the path throughout the swing so that we can just really go at it hard um, swinging from in to out and hit that draw shot. So we'll kind of keep going here. And as we swing the club back, we see that we're very, we call this laid off, but the club is very flat in relation to the ground. Typically, we'd like to see the club be a little more uh, vertical here with that line. Um, and why that, why that makes a difference there is that typically a golfer is going to do one of two things. From the top position will take you to the top. 99% of uh, uh, recreational golfers now will take the, their hands and they'll just kind of throw the hands right over the top here to get it back down to the golf ball. And that'll make the club shaft very steep. And like you, you noticed reading the book, hit down, damn it. You know, we don't want to hit steeply down onto the golf ball directly vertically down on top of it. We're going to swing from the inside. So knowing that, you do a good job here. We'll watch your hands as they kind of fall more down in an effort to hit the ball from the inside. So the shaft is kind of laying back down here again like it was originally. And so from there, that's not something that we're used to. But you swing the club down into the golf ball, and you hit a pretty good shot there. So the thing that can get us in trouble from that point in the swing, like we said, is to have the face of the club wide open and have to do something to correct that in the downswing. And as we're swinging the club 80 plus miles an hour, um, you can imagine that the consistency would be difficult to... Uh, to maintain from one shot to the next if we're having to do something to square the club face at that kind of speed. And the better we get our swing going, we'll be able to actually swing it faster. So we looked at uh, kind of a model swing, and this is uh, IK Kim from the uh, LPGA Tour. And she's set up swinging the club, and we're looking at her from down the line here too. We draw a line up through uh, the shaft there, goes right through her belt line. And then when she takes the club back, what'll be different than ours, we can see a couple of things. Her club head and the shaft, I'll use a green line for that, her club head and the shaft are above that line, and it's a little bird, but you can see that the club face is pointing down more towards the ball here. And we'll kind of click the lines away, but as she goes up, you can kind of see that even better here. The, the club face is still pointing more towards the target line rather than being pointing up into the sky. And the other thing that we notice is that at this point in the swing, where our hands are getting to be shoulder height, then the club shaft is much more vertical. And so that's just going to allow her to be able to hit down on the ball from the inside. Because if we get that club shaft laying down too much kind of back over here, then it's too flat and it's too shallow, we would say. And our tendency then is to just kind of scuff the ground at best behind the ball. We kind of move the center of the swing back. We scuff the ground behind the ball. Or knowing that's going to happen, our brain says, OK, don't hit the ground, but hit the ball and that type of thing. So this is just going to give her a chance to really hit down onto the golf ball. So she goes to the top. And again, we'll see if we took a line and we drew it up through her belt line there, 
we're going to see where that club comes down. See, even here, her club is not as laid down as ours was, but the face of the club is square to its path. Very good, as it, well it should be. She makes a living doing this. And so the club comes down now, and it's moving closer to that plane line. And now it's on the plane line. She's hitting from the inside. The club's going to get onto the back of the ball. And it's going to take off right down the target line, and she's just going to finish that swing up. So we knew then that we wanted to do something a little bit differently, and not just because it looks right, but because it'll actually functionally help us hit the golf ball better. And we use the professional players as models um, simply because you know, they've shown that that's kind of the way to do it because they generally they all exhibit the same uh, properties in their golf swing. One of them being what we're talking about, keeping the hands in while the club head stays outside. And so uh, we draw a line up the club shaft here, and we'll put the swing in motion. And we're still going to come a little bit under that line, but not nearly as much as we were with the other swing. And then one thing that we really notice that's really good right away is that the club face is, the toe is pointing up, yes, but the face of the club is actually pointing down towards the golf ball longer here. So this is very good. And you can see in the other video for you, our club shaft would be really back here at this point. And so this is just kind of, this is what we call keeping the club a little bit more on plane. Again, in the book, Hit Down Dammit, the guy talked about swinging the club from the inside and down, but on plane. We want to swing down on plane rather than steep and kind of drive the club into the ground and not get any power to the ball. So. Um, we'll kind of keep going back here, and we'll also see, like I.K. Kim's club, as we get to about right here in the swing, using the red line, you know, that sh the shaft of the club is considerably more vertical than it was in our other video. So this is already just, like, many percent uh, better. Um, and then so from the top, this is something that we can work on next time. How do I get down from here? You know, we kind of talked about the kid climbs the tree, and he's all gung-ho to get up in the tree, and he can do that real good, and he gets to the top and dawns on him. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> I don't know how to get down. It's a little tougher. So um, we'll work on that next time. But again, the hands drop down nicely. The shaft is laying down there, but still sufficiently vertical to hit down onto the golf ball. And from there, that's what we would kind of really want to just keep doing. Just kind of get the club and the hands to go down more towards the ball than kind of down our right leg there. Because what's going to happen here, since we're not used to this, our club kind of hits the ground well behind the ball and we kind of catch it bad. But, uh, and I recall making the comment that that was very good. And you said that you hit it fat and everything. And, and you did. But the the good about it was that we did a an exponentially better job of keeping the club head outside the hands and that's just a model position right there if the club shaft is parallel to the ground and parallel to the target line the club head is right in line with your hands as we look at it from down the line and the face of the club is square to the path so if you keep working on that for next time um, We'll have that piece knocked out. And as a byproduct of doing that, and you pointed this out, so I want to make sure we talk about it. As a byproduct of doing that, you really did a better job of maintaining your spine angle. If I drew a line that kind of represented your spine angle at the top of the swing, if we go back down to address, there you go. It pretty much matches perfectly. Um, your spine angle and address. So good job all around there. Keep working on, uh, you know, get comfortable with that grip too, like we talked about. Uh, maybe have the left hand be a little more on top of the club. But also uh, keep working on this uh, idea of the hands working in while the club head stays out. And if you achieve that by more thinking about doing that with the shoulder turn, and like you said, turning the shoulder down in order to do that, we definitely see more shoulder down here, and that's outstanding. So keep working on that. Keep having it look like that for the next time 
uh, we see each other.